Hello friends, you may recall during uh, last lecture we discussed about uh, various uh, principles, factors and other aspects of TOD that is transit oriented development, what are the factors which influence which motivate us to opt for the transit oriented development. Now, today we will discuss about how to implement it means how to implement on the ground the transit oriented development. To uh, discuss about uh, various aspects of uh, ground level implementation of transit oriented development, we will see like uh, features which are important for uh, making the TOD inclusive and resilient and what are different barriers which we have to overcome when we are talking about implementation of TOD and then different scales of TOD uh, from city to urban areas, suburban areas those kind of things and the role of stakeholders which we have of course discussed, but uh, when we implement then what is their uh, postures, their roles and then the readiness assessment when it is means completely ready from different uh, angles aspects to implement the TOD and then how to select the transit uh, uh, particular transit whether BRTS, MRTS what are the uh, you know those basic parameters which help us to go for a certain type of TOD and then how to select the corridor whether to go to through the A corridor or B corridor or C corridor. So, what are those factors all these things we will uh, discuss in today's lecture so that we can be prepared to implement the TOD. Well, when we talk about inclusive and resilient uh, TOD then basically we try to uh, you know include all those things which are important uh, from uh, you know different start of the population that uh, no segment of the society is left out. We include everyone means the transit oriented development should be of such a nature that it includes all the segments of the society whether poor, middle class, upper class means it should be accessible by all. It should not favor or disfavor a particular part of the society right. And then when we talk about resilience then we talk about different kind of uh, you know crisis or uh, very emergency situation when something occurs like earthquake or accidents or terrorists. Uh, attack then how to uh, you know uh, deal with that. So, that the system again uh, comes to the operational phase uh, without losing much time and uh, losses. So, that is the part of resilience which is also shown in terms of uh, like uh, inclusive inclusiveness like the vibrant and the people centric kind of public places has to be uh, connected with each other this TOD should help in that direction and the neighborhoods which promotes walking and bicycling those kind of things should be uh, there that integration has to hap happen. And it should develop you know it should, it should enhance the quality of life in terms of accessibility as well as integration of different public modes of the transportation. And then it should also manage to shift the population from privately owned vehicle to the public this transit system. And when we talk about inclusive infrastructure then also we talk about uh, within uh, you know population of every kind of people means we are not only talking from monetary point of view whether uh, you know poor or middle class or upper class uh, not only that, but we should also talk about you know different kind of uh, uh, physical uh, uh, challenges or physical uh, limitations of people. So, if uh, divyang people are there those are physically challenged people are there or differently abled people are there. So, they should also be able to access that transit oriented development or the system. So, ramps and uh, uh, for those who cannot see then those kind of you know footpaths should be there so that they can feel it. So, all means any kind of physical limitation should not hinder the people to access the transit system that is very important part of this publicly owned systems because it helps everyone to participate in the social and economic and cultural activities. So, when we want to give some practical example of inclusive infrastructure Delhi metro is a very good example because you see this kind of uh, you know footpaths or those kind of structures which can be felt by anybody even those who cannot see. So, they can use this for uh, the directions also they can sense the direction where to go when even going from one platform to another one or from one direction to another one. So, those kind of things plus from cost point of view also like 
the one kilometer like 32 kilometer one trip is uh, 60 rupees only okay uh, so that is around 1.87 or around 2 rupees per kilometer you can say so that is affordable by everyone whether it is low income group or middle class or anyone so those kind of things I, I mean to say whether it is materialistic uh, kind of limitations, monetary limitations or physical uh, dimensions related limitations of people, population or the social segments, those should not be acting as a kind of barrier and the Delhi Metro's example is there that every kind of person can access that facility of Delhi Metro. Resilience we were talking, so it should be in such a way the, de the design, the operation should be in such a way that even if some emergency occurs, let us say some tsunami, earthquake, uh, overcrowding, we are talking about any kind of uh, you know this uh, TOD around the world. So like uh, in Japan, you know when tsunami occurred, it was a big accident, but they were able to uh, you know uh, start every kind of uh, system after a few days that means they are resilient those systems are resilient and their uh, complete operation system management system administration system is so much integrated that they can take action timely and very effectively so uh, the system must be in a way that it can be adapted to the situation and the mitigation can be uh, taken very quickly and then it can transform from one stage like the stage when some accident occurred and that normal condition was disrupted. So, it can transform from abnormal condition to the normal condition very quickly. So, maintenance related issues or the way it is uh, you know restored from uh, those kind of issues when accident occurs to the normalcy uh, adaptation and transformation that should be there very quickly and very efficiently. When we talk about example, so like uh, in Delhi, some pockets have been identified that uh, you know those high rise buildings and the parking lots are not in a particular harmony and those parking lots uh, make them kind of uh, you know vulnerable from uh, if some something occurs like earthquake etc. Uh, similarly, uh, for example, there were limitations. Uh, when uh, you know the routes were designed, so those limitations were also uh, taken into account to make it better or resilient. When we uh, see you know these barriers like uh, uh, when it was uh, regional coordination related example if you want to see, so uh, this particular Delhi metro has been integrated with other transportation systems of the region like UP and Haryana, so Gurgaon is in Haryana, Faridabad is Haryana, Noida is in UP. So, how to coordinate, how to integrate them? So, <clears throat> one example is like uh, and thus this Gurugram or rapid metro which was developed in Haryana that is the Gurugram. So, it was uh, separately developed basically initially it was not uh, connected with the Delhi metro, but later on uh, you know it was given that it should also be run by uh, this uh, DMR. So, this Delhi metro rail uh, corporation DMRC took it into uh, its own hand and the stations and all those things were designed and integrated connected in such a way that uh, seamlessly the passengers can transfer from one kind of transit to another one from rapid to uh, metro Delhi metro from Delhi metro to Gurgaon rapid rail. So, those kind of integrations happens when we talk about regional coordination that is very important for comfortable journey of people uh, from different parts of that particular region. When we talk about different barriers, so like uh, uh, you know sometimes uh, uh, some particular uh, hesitation happens whether uh, data collection related to a particular kind of transportation system and uh, some restrictions related to policies or regulations. So, those things have to be addressed properly otherwise what happens that uh, suppose uh, a particular stretch is there and uh, because of certain policy if that stretch is uh, you cannot disturb that stretch then you have to completely de uh, reroute the uh, that uh, you know the, the transit system. So, all those things have to be uh, seen earlier in, a, in, a, in an advanced situation otherwise that can be a bottleneck in future. So, those barriers should be properly taken into account. When we talk about uh, you know articulating densities, so um, 
that means uh, you know as per uh, densified population or the dense population areas where this transit is going so it should serve the purpose means they should be in 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 a location where uh, nearby they can reach the station by walking or uh, some other uh, last uh, mile connectivity kind of systems etc and then it should not also be so much densely populated area and so limited uh, facility of the station that it becomes overcrowded. So, those kind of things you have to make very good balance otherwise what happens like uh, uh, you, you might be knowing that uh, uh, like at Knaat place uh, uh, this uh, two lines are meeting there and it becomes uh, at, at times very crowded lot of people are there and uh, it is not comfortable means. That means, the population flow uh, has not been taken into account or they were not able to estimate that this much load will be there. So, otherwise uh, you know the seamless flow should be there and it should be comfortable without any kind of struggling to uh, go to the you know coaches and getting out. This kind of situation is not good for a good transit system right. So, those things have to be taken into account that means, the density's articulation should be as per the population density. Uh, you have to take care whether it is the lean population then you can have a small station or so and if it is a densely populated area you have to have that kind of uh, you know area where the people can walk and they can have different platforms like that. Similarly, when we talk about uh, you know <coughs> like road infrastructure or the uh, policies related. So, there should not be inconsistencies in planning okay? and uh, inadequate policies or regulations which uh, are supporting different mechanisms. So, there must be very good co I mean combination and coordination otherwise uh, uh, problem arises in the future. Similarly, like the uh, finance related issues. So, um, the cost, cost intensive uh, facilities are not welcomed by people. So, proper calculations, proper estimations, where to get the money, where to generate the revenue from all those things have to be seen in advance and uh, in a right way. So, that implementation becomes very smooth. It is not that you have started to build one phase and you do not have money then lot of wastage of time and resources occur. Well, the framework, the framework strategy when we talk to implement. So, first of all uh, we assess. Okay. So, the assessment stage is like to determine uh, whether the city is ready for TOD. If you are just implementing TOD and uh, you know city is not ready in terms of uh, financial resources or proper routes etcetera and proper coordination between different departments then it becomes very tidy and very difficult. Then enable to enable like uh, those policies and barriers, barriers should be removed the policies must be in a favor of enabling this TOD planning processes. So, means if you want to start some venture, some public private partnership all those things have to be explored and enabling process must be enhanced. Well, then plan and design means you have got the data and assessment has been done properly. So, you can plan and design at this stage you have to formulate the context particular context where you have to provide the facility and the uh, problems which may arise and uh, before uh, you know like a proactive approach so that you can deal with the uh, the problems which may arise means you can have certain kind of modeling efforts then financial resources where to uh, you know bring those resources whether from private sector whether from some lending agency like world bank or uh, other agencies and then implement means uh, having better coordination better partnership then you go for implementation and if you, ha you have done all these stages properly then implementation becomes very easy and smooth otherwise if something gap remains then it becomes bottleneck or problem in the future. Different kind of scales of TOD uh, so it depends on uh, like areas and location like city region that is different issue different problems may be there then how to determine the corridor uh, planning and orientation station area how to design what are the important features which will be taken into account uh, when we design the station area as I have just given you an example that at Kanad place at certain times lot of crowd is there it is unmanageable kind of thing and it does not give good feeling when you walk from one platform to another or when we go from one line to another one. 
then site level related issues and the development context like whether it is greenfield means completely new project in terms of TOD or you are uh, developing something in suburban area or urban area like urban means like fully developed uh, like Delhi. So, Delhi metro was in a urban area. Okay. So, those kind of brownfield we call it that uh, there are situations, there are development activities, everything is going on and you have to add the TOD there to adjust or accommodate in or adapt in the situation uh, given situation. Right. So, those kind of things we can see like at the city region when we talk about the TOD, then there are issues like uh, the integration between different land usage and the transit system already some transit system will be there. So, how to integrate those transit system with the TOD okay? and it should provide certain points of intervention where uh, you know policies or statutory related requirements uh, like master plans or development plans. So, they are also integrated properly it is not like out of blue you just give a plan and you have to go for that no the existing plans should be smoothly adjusted according to the uh, TOD. Then when we talk about the corridors, so uh, you know this should ensure the development as per re requirement of the network and uh, uh, places. So, again you have to see whether uh, you know those corridors pass through those locations where around 10 minutes or 800 meter distances to 2 kilometer distances and walking, cycling and uh, like 3 wheelers etcetera those kind of things can uh, take to the uh, transit corridor. So, the route should be in such a way right. Otherwise, if you are you know uh, taking the route in such a way that you do not find any kind of connectivity then it becomes a problem. When we talk about station area, so uh, you have to see like uh, the 5 to 10 minutes walking distances must should be there means beyond that people would not like to walk in the area the developed area around the station. So, the, that kind of things you have to take an into account otherwise if you spread it uh, like facilities beyond uh, 400, 500 meter then people would not like to walk there. Okay? They, they will go to another station where things are in a uh, close proximity and where they can access from one kind of service to another kind of like shopping or other kind of uses if they see. When we talk about the site level related scaling then uh, again this 5 to 10 minutes kind of walking and these like stations and uh, uh, other facilities uh, at the site means for example, there is a station and uh, the adjoining site how it is being developed. So, those kind of uh, you know scale of walking and distances has to be kept in mind when we you are designing whether station or the corridor or a particular city region integration. So, how many minutes are taken? by walking or by some particular uh, mode of tra transport and the distances which are covered all these things really influence the design of those particular segments of the TOD. When we talk about uh, greenfield development of transit uh, oriented development then uh, you know it is kind of free thing means no development is there you have to organize everything new. So, lot of freedom is there means you can go for single ownership by creating a, uh, a public uh, a limited company or uh, a totally public uh, kind of uh, governance or you can also go for public private partnership or you can give uh, to uh, uh, being operated by a private party depending upon situation means you are free to decide there is lot of freedom is there. Similarly, like high percentage of government lands is there. So, lot of planning freedom is there because uh, there is no hindrance you can take permissions and there are no different conflict of interest when it occurs when privately owned lands are there. So, people have their own priorities and sometimes uh, they take time to sell it or it becomes difficult or time consuming. And it also help in uh, lowering the land cost because of this greenfield development is there. So, you do not need to demolish or you do not have limitations for example, if highly uh, you know developed area is there uh, and uh, there is no place then you have to go to underground. So, cost escalates like anything right. Similarly, uh, financial resources uh, can be available from different agencies because it is a new project and you can sell the idea that this is the way we are going to develop and these are the ways of revenues which will come from. 
So, the lending agency may also be interested. There may be opportunities for constructing high, high, higher capacity of infrastructure systems like high rise buildings or any way you want to orient that system you can do. Similarly, like regulatory barriers are minimal because again the new project is there unless in between some lands are there which are disputable or something uh, which, which kind of things you can easily avoid. So, greenfield projects are easy to implement when uh, you see the TOD related issues. So, this uh, one example is Naya Raipur in Chhattisgarh. So, they are developing uh, the new capital city of the Chhattisgarh. So, uh, new BRTS system is coming up as a, a TOD and that is why you know this is this will be cost effective because they can do many experiments according to their aspiration, according to their goals, aims and objectives. So, all the principles of TOD can be easily followed. When we talk about suburban, then there are certain issues like uh, higher percentage of sites available for transformation because in suburban people are uh, thinly populated, lot of countryside uh, area is also there. Then low land cost comparable to the city area or urban area. So, again it is also advantageous uh, situation in comparison to the city. Otherwise, uh, from green field uh, comparison, this may not be so much uh, freedom. There are certain limitations which you have to follow. When we talk about the urban law or brownfield where development is already there and you have to adjust your TOD in that developed area like city area. Uh, you can imagine like uh, in old Delhi such a crowded place it is. So, underground metro uh, you have to plan and everything is going on upstairs uh, on the ground level and the high uh, machinery then precision system. So, lot of issues are there which occurs in brownfield. Uh, this is the example of uh, the TOD of uh, Delhi metro. So, this was in uh, Delhi and there were lot of challenges in fact, but uh, DMRC uh, you know had a very good planning and they timely uh, completed different phases and now it is one of the very publicly sought uh, system. When we talk about like stakeholders in uh, the role of uh, stakeholders in TOD planning, so uh, you have seen stakeholders role in several stages. So, here also like in policy making, political leadership, so different groups of the stakeholders are there, then economic development related stakeholders may be there who will uh, participate in terms of land, in terms of property, in terms of money, etcetera and transport planners or road uh, safety experts, urban planners, community uh, people. So, all those kind of stakeholders have to join hands and their role becomes important if you want to develop an inclusive kind of uh, you know TOD system. So, the consultation with the stakeholders is very important and that have to be taken into account time to time. So, that you get timely very good feedback and some incentives are also there because uh, on the basis of stakeholders uh, feedback, you can change your plan otherwise it becomes very costly afterwards. If you ignore something which is very important and which information or data can come from stakeholders only in the void of that if you plan the TOD then it may be very problematic in future. So, the stakeholders participation is very very important. Then we talk about the readiness assessment whether the proje project is ready to implement whether that site is ok. So, so, the existing policies, regulatory framework you have to study and then technical capacities uh, available in house and uh, you have to hire some experts for that whether your particular agency which is implementing this is also having in house experts you can loop into that ok. And then existing data availability or uh, you have to conduct some uh, surveys and studies to get the data all those gaps you have to build or bridge. So, the readiness will depend upon uh, the minimum gap right. So, the data related issues you can get from census data or some reports which are prepared by different agencies and then photographs uh, from satellite photographs you can get uh, you know uh, different kind of densities or different kind of land use and land, land plan is easily uh, seen by high definition aerial photographs ok. And then the secondary data from secondary sources. Uh, related to economic uh, data or uh, social data those kind of things and uh, other like Google street view all those you know tools may also help. When we uh, talk about uh, detailed assessment, so the three value framework which uh, is very important from the world bank uh, you know these are like place value, 
and node value and the market value. So, the place value uh, depend upon the density uh, of the street intersections, then local pedestrian accessibility, diversity of the usage okay? uh, and the infrastructure density within the 800 meter uh, around the station. Similarly, the node value is uh, basically defined by uh, the centrality of the location whether it is skewed at the center, closeness to various uh, 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 the uses or the places important places where people will travel to. Then daily ridership how much it will be there, intermodal diversity whether it is connecting to other kind of uh, transportation systems or not and also market potential because uh, you know the real estate related opportunities if you are developing in a particular way and if you do not find uh, you know takers then that uh, system will fail. So, the market potential has to be properly assessed whether it will be welcomed by the people, whether people will shift to those areas which you are developing to help the transit system or transit oriented development. When we talk about the revenue risk assessment because it is very important unless the revenue will be generated to sustain the system it will not uh, go for long. So, you have to design in such a way that whether through uh, you know the selling of the um, uh, land for uh, having the high rise buildings to the developers or uh, real estate developers and builders and uh, also uh, like developing markets and selling shops to the people uh, who will use them. So, if uh, those kind of demand related issues have been taken into account and uh, people really access them, go for shopping etcetera. So, that way lot of revenue generates, people are you know uh, using the parking lot and going uh, from one place to another uh, taking the uh, this uh, transit system whether MRTs or BRTs those kind of things. So, all those things really help you to reduce the risk of the revenue generation. So, that has to be taken the occupancy ratio and the price which really sometimes compete. So, you can see you know different kind of combinations are there, somewhere it is revenue risk is high, we have to avoid those situation, uh, the revenue risk uh, low <coughs> that situation should be welcomed. So, those kind of you know uh, medium and high risk and low risk kind of different uh, situations or combinations have been discussed in this particular uh, chart you can see. Then the selection criteria uh, depends upon uh, like adequate capacity and then right of the way, way of the transit that means availability of the dedicated corridors or the need that, that should be you know in harmony and then the potential to integrate pedestrian needs such as safe crossings etcetera because if the crossings are not safe people will not feel uh, good uh, to cross those uh, particular locations. So, those things you have to keep otherwise people will avoid uh, going to uh, station if uh, safe pedestrian paths are not provided. Right? Then uh, the living conditions of the surrounding development that should really add value to the life standards. Then estimating uh, this TAC that is transport and accident cases. So, uh, you know the accidents uh, kind of scenarios must be minimum. So, those things facilities must be there so that the chances of accidents are reduced very much. Okay? And then the ease of implementation with respect to the familiarity with the technology. If you bring some very new technology which people are hesitant to use, then again it becomes a long time gap or lag to uh, get adaptation to the local population. So, you that also you have to keep in mind. Then the alternative assessments like uh, uh, you know the people and the job opportunities means density of the population as well as the opportunities for the economic activities that should be there. Then destination and land use kind of things means people uh, uh, should be uh, easily accessible to uh, the stations, they, they, the extension should be easily accessible so that they can go from their destination 1 to destination 2. The connectivity should be very smooth and the existing policies should not be against the development of the transit oriented system. When we talk about the city plan, so the growth potential, economic development, the, the mixed uses and the land value capture means again related to revenue because if land value is not enhanced, then people uh, you know will feel discouraged. So, those things you have to integrate and the transportation demand, so the ridership and the travel time they will really uh, you know influence the transportation demand. If travel time is more, people not will welcome it. 
travel time is less, they will come and access the system. Okay, and then existing with the existing uh, integration with the existing network and the reliability as whether it will come on the time and it will take to the destination on time also. Safety issue means people are very sure that nothing wrong will happen okay? and supporting non-motorized transportation and walking. So, that way these are the things which will really enhance the transportation demand. And uh, corridor selection criteria is related to like implementation and operation. So, the construction must be easy those in those corridors. If there, there are some disputed land areas, the construction will be halt and it will be very costly in, uh, later on. Financial viability must be there as we have talked several times that the lending must be available and the revenues uh, potential must be good. Okay? And the impacts to the property must be positive rather than negative. So, it should not cross in such a way that it adds to the negative. If it is crossing towards the population which is densely packed the area, then the, if noise related issue is there, then it is a negative externality. So, that has to be minimized by uh, you know noise barriers etcetera, those things have to be taken into account. Environmental impacts must be minimum, okay? ability to implement must be enhanced. So, all those things are related to the corridor selection. So, in conclusion, we can say that uh, you know several steps are involved between the idea of the uh, TOD and uh, it is uh, being implemented to a particular city or particular suburban area or to a green field. Right? And then data driven assessment is very important because if you are planning without having solid data, robust data or the objectively surveyed data, then your planning will not match with the ground reality and that will be problematic in later on. You will find that your you know BRTS or MRTS is empty, nobody is taking because uh, data were not there, you have just planned hypothetically or imaginary. So, that should not occur, that gap should not occur, you must have very good data, reliable data based on you know first survey or even if you are getting secondary sources data, that should be from reliable sources. right? Then if we uh, you know uh, talk about like inclusiveness, resilience. So, that is also very important. If you are uh, you know not taking into account those population which are like uh, weaker section or marginalized, if you are uh, not considering their uh, necessities, then that system is not inclusive. So, you have to take into account all kind of population segments, they can access it. And resilience, if something emergency occurs, whether uh, due to earthquake or due to some accident, then the system must come in the operation minim within minimum possible time. So, that kind of resilience must be there technologically and from policy point of view. So, this is all for today uh, from the implementation perspective of the TOD and this is uh, one uh, good source where you can get more idea about how to implement uh, the TOD related uh, systems. Thank you uh, for your kind attention. And now we will uh, discuss the case studies which will give you better perspective and better understanding how to uh, you know design and implement TOD in different settings whether it is urban or suburban or greenfield those kind of things. Thanks again.